not smiling. Enjoy! Chet Yud Chaf. Yes, Chet Yud Chaf. Chaf Sofit, by the way. And first, I'm going to give you a rude introduction before we actually get into the, um, into the conjugation. So this root here, for those who have a little bit still difficulties reading the letters, that chaf sufit is a chaf, and you might have had a better time recognizing it if it was not a sufit. So let me put this here in brackets. Chet, yud, chaf. But as a sufit, it gets a little bit longer, let's say. Okay, so this is um, the root we're talking about. And now we look and there's one thing that's important to recognize. We are dealing here with a root that has a yud in the middle of the root. Okay, this means watch out. There might be some specialties around it. Specialties are not always difficulties. Guys, specialty just means watch out. And I tell you now, what to watch out for and when you have seen it what to do um roots that have yud in the middle belong to a verb type called ein yud ein yud means there is a yud on the second root position this is where the name comes from if you're really interested in knowing about verb types Let's mean the mean the um, subclassification of roots. Yeah, okay. You probably already say, ah, root. Can you can you ever stop this? We don't even know how to conjugate it, and you want to ah uh, subclassify roots? Please stop it. It's it's okay. You don't have to. But in case, well, verb type a verb type is called a gizra. I made a full video on it, and the link is in the bio. Okay, so. This was up front. We are talking about a root with a yud in the middle. And now we start with the infinitive. To make sure you know where you're going, for a moment I'm gonna repeat the general rule. As if there was nothing to watch out for. The general rule in PL says, take the root, put a lamet in front and you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. PL in infinitive is more or less a perfect word. Now we come to our root, which has a yud in the middle. And that means when we have put the lambda in front, we need another yud. This special yud, spoiler alert, stays with us all the time. All the conjugations are going to have a double yud. And we come to lechayech. Lechayech means to smile. Okay, and now next point, present tense. Here's our root. And now we come to our reference point for all conjugations. Third person masculine singular. He's our king. And for him, we place a mem in front and again the additional yud between the second and the third letter. This is why I said this up front. Get ready, additional yud all the time somewhere. Well, most of the time in the back. <laughs> okay. Um, here comes our root. And now we do exactly that. Mem in front and yud between the last two letters. And here we are. And we read who Mechayech, he smiles. From who Mechayech, we derive all the other persons. He Mechayechet. Hem Mechayechim. Hen Mechayechot. I'm saying this so slowly so that you don't get suffocated on the way. This is Lechayech in present tense. Everybody smiling. Okay. Oh, here we go. Past tense. Past tense. Again, same thing. I come back for a moment to the general rule because I have to hammer that into you. 
When you have the root, of course your next step is the reference point, third person masculine singular. Now in past tense, the third person masculine singular follows the name of the bin yang. Yes, I know. You're not here for the first time. You have heard it 22 times already. I hope. So now you know what comes. What is the name of the binyan? Huh? PL. Right. We are in PL. And this you have to write in Hebrew because it gives you the recipe. What to do next? What do you see? You see three letters of the root plus a yud. Perfect. This is applied like this, the person we are looking for. Third person masculine singular. The root letters plus a yud. And you are done. By the way, I also say this always at that point. All the rules are in the book and all the rules you can practice in the workbook. Information in the bio. We keep going. Here we are. Three letters of the root plus a yud. For our root, we do the same. Three letters of the root is what we see, and now the extra yud. Okay, here it's in the first between the first and the second letter, the other one we had between the second and the third letter. However, the picture is the same. You see that? It's double yud at the end. And we read Hu Khiech. He smiled. And again, I remind you, the name of the Binyan orchestrates the whole story. P L Chiyef. Okay, Hu Chiyef. It might be a little bit um, difficult for those who speak languages which don't have these guttural letters, but I'm sure you're getting used to it after a while. And just follow this recipe. You need I E in the sound. Hu he smiled. So, we are putting into our table of the past tense and then we fill it up. Oh, what is that? Well, hey, we are in PL. Vowel changes ahead in the first and second persons. It is but ani chiyachti. So I, well I, the first <laughs> and the second persons have an A sound. Actually, to be honest, there is more or less a vowel change in all the conjugations in the first and second um, persons. But since most students are so hooked on Pa'al, you don't notice. So now we read it together. Ani chiyachti. Ata chiyachta. At chiyacht. Hu chiyech. Hi chicha. Anachno chiyachno. Atem atem chiyachtem chiyachten. Hem hen chichu. Okay, and here we are already in future tense. I hope by now you have gotten used a bit to these guttural sounds. I know it's a little bit difficult when they are actually, um, well, at the beginning and at the end of, of the root. So you have, uh, you're busy in your throat. I understand that. <laughs> to come to our future tense reference point, third person masculine singular, we put a yud in front. And of course, the other yud we always need between the second and the third letter. So we have our double yud. The first yud is the prefix. That is the prefix that we always have when we create the future tense. This is from the third person masculine singular. And the other yud, what I just said, it's the extra yud we need for the verb type ein yud. So this will not leave us till the end of this presentation. And here we read, Hu yechayech. He will smile. Hu 
חייך. אוקיי? So, who you have? We are writing into our future tense table and we fill up all the others. And now we're going to read this together. אני אחייך. אתה תחייך. את תחייכי. הוא יחייך. היא תחייך. אנחנו נחייך. אתם אתם תחייכו. הם הם יחייכו. Great! This was past tense and now we are moving on um, to the imperative. Here most of you also have already seen my videos and you know I am presenting at this point two possibilities. One is you express the imperative by the use of the future tense and the second is you use the grammatically correct imperative. Now starting with the first imperative by future tense you go back to the to the table we have already created together just a minute ago you identify those persons that qualify for the receipt of an order let's say to who can you talk when you give an order an imperative at the end of the day is an order it can be you masculine you feminine or you plural and here we are so if i say to somebody smile I can say תחייך או תחייכי. To a group of people, I can say תחייכו. This is here at אתם אתן. תחייכו. Grammatically, correctly speaking, here is our root, and we just put this missing second yud. And we are done. This is the yud that we, as I just said, that we always need for the verb type ein yud. We always need double yud for these conjugations. And now we derive the other person. So we are here at chayech, chayechi, and chayechu. And this is already the end of the chapter of imperative. And... How big can you smile now? Come on, smile with me. <laughs> I was so happy to actually find a root that only exists in one binyan because I am really busy right now and I really make efforts to keep putting these videos right, um, out right now. And uh, the next one about gerunds, I'm going to post tomorrow. Chicago.